Welcome back. Well, we left off on problem number 13, but let me start it all over just so that um, we don't uh, get confused kind of doing the problem over the course of two videos. So number 13, it starts off with this pattern. 3, 5, minus 5. And what it says in the problem is that each odd number term, right, or each even number term, is 2 more than the previous term, and then each Odd number term is negative one times the previous term, right? So you know, to go, we started with three. So let me say, let me say term. Let me write here term. Term and then value. And then what we did. Maybe we could call that f of x, right? Or the function. What? what did, how did we? How did we go from one value to the next? So if we make a table. See, term 1 is values 3, and that's just the starting one. Term 2 is 5. That's because we added 2, right? We added 2 to 3. And we could write 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. Term 3 is minus 5, and that's because minus 1 times this 5 times this 5. Let me draw these arrows, is equal to minus 5. And then we add, again, I'm going to switch colors just to keep it interesting. Oh, whoops. So term 4, we're going to add, it's going to be minus 5. It's going to be minus 5 plus 2, which equals minus 3. Minus 3. Then term 5 is going to be minus 3, minus 3 times minus 1, which equals 3 again. right? And I think you can see how we're getting these patterns. We just keep switching between adding 2 and multiplying by negative 1. And then so term 6 is going to be what? It's going to be this plus 2, which is 5. And I think you're seeing the pattern again. Let me do a bunch more, and I'll, I'll do it outside of the scope of this chart. But term 7, let me term. Term value. Term 7 is going to be what? It's going to be minus 1 times that, so minus 5. And you see the pattern now. Term 8 is going to be minus 3. Term 9 is going to be, term 9 is going to be what? Minus 3, minus 3. So from here, here we added 2, so we multiply it uh, by uh, negative 1, so it's going to be 3 again. Right. And you could just experiment with yourself. Once you understand how this pattern works, just keep multi uh, once you understand how the sequence works, do a bunch of terms, you know, until you see a cycle. And that's that's the key thing. In any SAT problem, when they ask you like what is the hundredth term, it's going to have a cycle because they don't expect you to sit and write out 100 terms because you would run out of time. So if they ask you the 100th term, there's probably going to, you know, the, the pattern probably repeats every 3 or 4 or 5 or at most 6 terms. And then you can use that to figure out what the 100th term is. So here we see that the pattern repeats, let's see, 3, 5, negative 5, negative 3, 3, 5, negative 5, negative 3, 3. So we see it repeats every fourth term, right? This is kind of one cycle, then 3, 5, negative 3, and then this is another circle, right? Cycle. So it has this four pattern. So can we can we come up with any um, any any term that is a multiple of four? What is our value? Well, at four, our value is minus three. What's the next multiple of four? Eight. At eight, our value is minus three. So in general, and if we did twelve, we'd also get minus three, right? If you wanted, if you don't believe me, you should try it out. So at any multiple of four, we know our value is minus three. So what I do is, they want to know the 55th term. They want to know the 55th term. 55th term. So what is the value? What, is, what term is a multiple of 4 that is closest to 55? Let's see, is 56 a multiple of 4? Well, yeah, 56, 56, let's see, that's 10. 14 times 4 is 56, right? So the 56th term. We know the 56th term, because this is because 56 is a multiple of 4, just like 4 and 8 and 12. So the 56th term is 56th. I have trouble saying that. Maybe I have a little lisp. 56th term is negative 3, right? Because it's a multiple of 4. If the 56th term is negative 3, what is the 55th term? 
Well, the term before the negative 3 term is always the negative 5 term, right? Up here, negative 3, it's always negative 5. So the answer is negative 5 is the 55th term. And that is choice A. Very good. All right, let's move on to the next question. Invert cars. I know that one's a little hard. And, and those, you always just have to experiment a little bit, try to see the cycle, and then make sure you have your terms right, You know that you're starting on the first term as opposed to the zero term. And then figure out what the easiest value is as close to what they're asking as possible, and then you can kind of move backwards or forwards. That's how I do it. That's so you don't get too confused with the shifts on the terms. All right, number 14. In the xy plane, the equation of line L is, OK, let me write that down. Number 14, the equation of line L is y is equal to 2x plus 5. If the line m is the reflection of L in the x-axis, what is the equation of line m? So I'm going to draw a graph for you, just so you understand what I'm doing. But if on the real SAT, you really don't have to do this, because you would, once again, run out of time. But let me. Oh man, I'm gonna run out of time if I can't draw a straight line. I'm being a stickler for this. Oh, I still couldn't do it, but I'll move forward. So that's that was the y-axis. That's the x-axis. Better. Okay, so this line, so y equals two x plus five. So if if you remember from our 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 kind of our uh, you know slope and y-intercept modules, the y-intercept is going to be five. Right here. And then the line's going to have a slope of 2, right? So the line's going to look something like this. You know, it's going to look something like this. That's line L. Line L. Anyway, line L, it sounds like. Anyway, this is line L. And then we want to know, we, we, they say line M is the reflection of L in the x-axis. So reflection, you kind of view the x-axis. This is the x-axis. So it's like if, if we were looking at this in a, in a pool of water, the reflection would look would 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 be like if you took this and flipped it over the x axis. So the line m is going to look something like this. It's going to look something like this. Line m is going to look like this. So a couple of things. It's going to it's, it's like the mirror image if we flipped it, right? It's like we flipped it over the axis. So if the y intercept here is 5, the y intercept here is going to be minus 5. Right, because we just flipped it, and similarly, if this, if if every, you know, if every one this moves up two, right, because that's its slope, rise of run is two. For every one we move here to the right, we're going to go down two, so the slope is going to be the negative of this, or negative two. So line m, so this is line m. The equation of line m is going to be y is equal to. It's going to have the negative slope, right, the same slope, but it just moves in the downward direction, so it's going to be minus two x. And then its y-intercept is, instead of plus 5, it's going to be minus 5, minus 2x, minus 5. And that is choice A. It looks like the next problem involves a lot of drawing, and I only have a minute and a half left in this video. So I will do the next problem in the next video. I will see you soon.